Hello everyone, BC here from BC Moto, and I have something really exciting to share with you today. An experiment, one which I love to do. Now, rumor has it in the 10th gen community that, and I thought it was a joke, but that blow valves could actually affect a math-based car, especially these newer math-based cars. So now I have right behind me a 2020 Honda Civic Si, provided courtesy of American Honda, so thank you so much guys. And I also have my friends from TurboSmart providing a blow up valve to put this this myth to the test. Now, we didn't do this initially at factory boost levels, and then with the aid of a K-Tuner tuning software, we're gonna raise the boost and then repeat the test again. So, let's put this myth to the test. Do blow-up valves really adversely affect and hurt newer SIs? We'll find out. So guys, I now have the vehicle set up on the dyno and I did some very interesting things to get data because data is key. No guesswork here. I have the dyno hooked up to the chassis. I have a wide band in the tailpipe with a very nice monitoring system on my dyno. Even with the onboard diagnostic, I have my dyno connected to that. So the dyno pack allows me to see everything the factory ECU sees from AFRs to command inputs to data being logged, even vehicle speed to coolant temp, you name it. Now, what's very important to me this afternoon is to be able to monitor the wastegate command and how quickly and well the ECU can be able to monitor the wastegate actually following that. That would tell me if something is awry if I do add a blow up valve and if it's misbehaving or, or, you know, or not. Um, so that being said, we're gonna have a lot of fun, get a lot of data, and we're gonna go over the data one by one and make sure everything is proper. And if it's not, I'll let you know. If it is, my goodness, I'll be so excited. Okay, we'll see what happens. I am shocked. Honda's always conservative with their numbers. The specs say 205, 208 horsepower. We got 191 to the wheels, which is amazing. And 217 pound for the torque. My goodness, is it because it's a press car? What's the deal? I don't know, but it's a good start, which shows that Honda's come a long way with this 1.5 liter engine. So now we're gonna switch over to the Turbo Smart blow up valve and take a look and see how the results differ, if at all. And with a lot of emphasis on the data that happens behind the scenes to make sure we're doing something that is good. Well, now the Turbo Smart blow valve is installed and we're gonna test this myth, this thing I keep hearing from certain individuals that the blow valve is a detrimental attribute to the engine, that it could affect how boost is being controlled. Um, I don't see with a proper designed blow off how that could be the issue and how it can even affect a catalyst. It's just, it just sounds like rubbish. You know, if we're in the 90s dealing with an old school, let's say boosted RX-7, I understand how the older math systems used to work, where we may have this slight dip in some rich mixtures, but with today's technology, with a combination of math and also a map sensor, and new strategies that are implemented by great companies like Honda, I don't see how vented atmosphere is a challenge. So let's find out. I'm gonna do a sweep now when I look at those parameters and see what's really going on.
Look at that. That is crazy. People are so... Ugh, a myth. Not only did we see absolutely no change in air fires, even in partial throttle as I was stabbing it, the sound is just amazing. You can tell that Honda has a much more advanced control protocol that incorporates both the map and the map and is not affected by the way the blow valve at all. But because of the improved sealing of the Turbo Smart Performance blow valve, we gained five wheel horsepower. So we're not losing a seal. We're actually gaining power with this blow valve that I believe was even in the in the softest setting. So Oh my God, you know, why do people do this? Is it to make, become more popular? What's the purpose? Data doesn't lie, it's right there. Am I happy with the results so far? Yes, but can we test even more? Yes, we can. So I'm going to use a K-Tuner, increase the boost, and then see if we can still get similar results and nice seals. What's interesting is, as I, I stabbed the throttle in steady state, I didn't see any rich mixtures being introduced into the system. It's the Honda engineers know what they're doing. It's a very clever system, and, and I knew that, but when I heard these rumors, I had to experiment myself and find out if it's true or not. So, let's up the boost and see what happens. What's really critical with this experiment are the air-fuel ratios. And as you can see, with the solid red and dotted red lines, that's factory, ECU setup, with the dotted line being bone stock and the solid red being with the Turbo Smart blower valve. Now, you may also see this beautiful purple, pink, and also orange. Those are where I put in a K-Tuner base map just to test the blow off valve in non-sport and sport mode respectively to see if any challenges will come at higher boost levels. And of course, me being a very conservative tuner, I put a bunch of fuel in there, use this base map that's very unique and very healthy and safe. And still, guess what? No challenges whatsoever in both sport and normal mode with the Turbo Smart blow off valve. Now, wide open throttle is one thing, but we spend a lot of time in partial throttle environments. So, when we're driving around having a blast, it's very important to have a stable AFR ratio. Now, the older map sensors, yes, would compensate for the air and then dump a bunch of fuel if an external blow valve was used, but luckily for us with Honda's protocol nowadays, which is very advanced, it's not an issue. We have standard safe air fuel ratios that have nothing that can be introduced that's challenging with the Turbo Smart blow valve. Okay, so we got some amazing results here with just a K-Tuner flash on top of the lovely blow off valve from our good friends at TurboSmart. Now, what we noticed here is peak to peak is very similar. This is a new 2020, so it's a little different. So we have not much gains in terms of peak, but look at the area under curve in the sport mode versus non. If we look at this region, which is closer to the 5200 range, or better yet 47, sorry. Look at that gain. 27 wheel horsepower and torque peak to peak we picked up 31 but the biggest delta exists here 34 pound foot of torque so that shows that coupled with the k tuner and the turbo smart we have a lot of good gains there which brings me once again to the myth guys bottom line is this at regular boost levels or higher boost levels the blow off valve is not an issue even in the soft settings there's no challenges like what you may see with earlier math systems, the system that exists in the new SI, the 10th Gen SI, and the Type R, and even a Civic Sport is way more advanced incorporating data from the math and also the pressure sensors, giving you a worry, trouble-free experience. So, by all means, use the blow valve that you deem appropriate as long as it's manufactured properly. And that brings me to another point. Not all BOVs are created equally. Some blow valves are manufactured very great, with great tolerances and a lot of attention detail and quality control. Others out there aren't quite good, especially that one that starts with letter B. I'm not too crazy about that one. But long story short, this one has proven that a myth is busted. You can have a vent atmosphere 
blow valve that does it extremely well without any damaging effects to your vehicle and with no challenges with air fuel ratios even as you're stabbing the throttle. So guys, thanks for doing a good job and thanks for uh, staying here with me and stay safe out there.